it is raining, it's cold, it's a gloomy autumn day. Let's spice things up. Let's have an exotic fountain pen review. As always, I'm your host, Amy from Pen Venture. Welcome back to the channel. It is time to review one of the fountain pens that you've been asking me to review for quite some time, the Delta Dolce Vita Custom Mediterranean Celluloid. This is going to be funny, but let me tell you that it's almost like five years since the first time that I've seen this fountain pen in person. And I still vividly remember the, the jaw dropped uh, in that moment, uh, mine, of course. I visited Salvatore in Italy uh, from Leonardo of Cina Italiana, and his father is the co-founder of the Delta Pen Company, Ciro. And I was at their HQ, and I've seen one of these fountain pens getting ready to be repaired by Ciro. And I still remember picking that fountain pen up, and my jaw dropped, because I haven't seen something like that ever. Beautiful, big, original, different from anything else that I've seen. And uh, that was the moment that I said, sometime I'm gonna want a Delta fountain pen. Well, fast forward five years, look at me now. I have a few Deltas and things have been progressing a lot. If you are a fountain pen collector and love Italian writing instruments, most likely you would need to have a Delta in your collection. They had a sort of style which characterized their designs. They were ahead of time, original, inventive. In regards of popularity, amongst other Delta creations, I would put the Dolce Vita to be the flagship model. It's the model that is very, very easily identified with everything that means Delta. Of course, it's available in a few other sizes, and I don't own the smaller versions. This is the oversized, the biggest one that there is. This may look familiar with another creation from Delta. There is a Chatterley Luxury exclusive Delta. I think it's called uh, Turchese Meraviglia. And that fountain pen is the one that you see in front of you right here, this one, the blue one, with small details that are missing, primarily the ink window. Besides that, the fountain pen is pretty, pretty similar. And this fountain pen, I got it from Chiro. This is his personal fountain pen, and I think one of the only Delta Dolce Vita oversized fountain pens made in this beautiful uh, Mediterranean celluloid. It's his personal fountain pen, and I do have quite a few of his personal creations, fountain pens that he wrote with them, the co-founder of the Delta Pen Company. And it's just sort of the tradition. When I visit him, I uh, get to pick something from his desk, a fountain pen or something like this, and I take it back with me home. So the next time that I'm visiting him, I hope he has something very interesting waiting for me on his desk. Let's go through the details. First of all, on the finial, we have this beautiful, beautiful Delta logo, and it's sort of an imprint of a nib, which is stamped from a sheet. I do like the flat ends, which are perfectly polished. There is no rough edges, nothing whatsoever. Going down from the finial, we have this sort of crown. The finial is placed on this ring. From this ring, we have the clip emerging outside. It's the classic simple delta clip with the small little wheel and of course it's been used in our days as well on many other italian fountain pens including on the leonardo fountain pens opposite to the clip we find engraved delta italy and it's a very very nice place where to put your logo or branding on a fountain pen the shape of the cap is starting to pick up in girth from here towards the cap rings the cap band configuration is very original to delta and it's composed of two different rings, a smaller one, then we have some celluloid, and right here we have the larger one, which is made out of sterling silver 925 with a beautiful original motif. Opposite to the clip on the back, we find the hallmark for sterling silver. Then we have this part of celluloid right here, which is very, very smoothly polished. This is a beautiful, beautiful celluloid. And there is two companies which I've seen using it. 
One of it is Leonardo, although it was back in the day when they did that 100 Fountain Pass Momento Zero series, I remained with that vivid image of this beautiful turquoise celluloid. Then I've seen it used with Montegrappa, and uh, what makes it unique is the actual way that this celluloid is capturing the light. It is composed of these beautiful shades of turquoise, dark blue, it has a lighter part and a darker part, and no matter how you align these two parts, it's just like water dangling in front of you. It's something which is deep, which is beautiful, chateauant, light shows it very, very well. Celluloid is no longer produced. The stock of celluloid is diminishing day by day, being used in collections, in fountain pans, and at one point we will not have any celluloid left. So if you have the chance to have such a fountain pen in a celluloid material, I think you should own one if you are a fountain pen collector, just to have a glimpse of history. I'm not going to go into the details, but you know how important, how rare and valuable is celluloid. Screw cap, one complete turn of the cap to unveil one of the most beautiful nibs from Delta. It's the size 8 14 karat gold nib. I have to say that these nibs are some of the most interesting nibs that I've used on a Delta fountain pen. I have yet to test out the fusion nibs, uh, the steel nibs of Delta, but in regards of gold nibs, I uh, tested the size 6 and the size 8. And in the size 8, I do have a few fountain pens with different nib sizes and I enjoy this beautiful, beautiful big nib from Delta. They are not similar to what Leonardo is using these days. They have a different way of writing, they feel different, they have a different feeder, this low profile ebonite feeder and everything else is just very, very unique to this specific nibs. And I'm gonna show you how they write in the writing sample, which is going to follow after the side-by-side -side size comparison. On the right shoulder right here, we have the nib uh, size stamped medium. In this case, this beautiful motif of Delta is showcased on this nib. We have the scrolling, which is going around. In the middle, we have the logo, Delta, the gold content of the nib. It's a splendid nib. It's big, it's juicy, it's wet, and I cannot wait to show you how it's riding. Now let's go into the ergonomics, and we have the section. Basically the same diameter, just like the entire barrel of the fountain pen. Here we have this beveled edge, which is sort of a feature that's supposed to make the fountain pen feel a lot more comfortable to stop your fingers from uh, slipping towards the nib. Uh, then we have the capped threads, which are polished perfect, and there is no uh, problem if you hold the fountain pen by those threads at all. The barrel continues to pick up in girth slightly, slightly, towards this ring right here, which is made out of metal, rhodium plated like the entire trims of the fountain pen. This is the end cap, and I say end cap because it's not connected with the piston knob uh, that you will find if you unscrew this, you will have access towards the piston filling mechanism of this fountain pen. Although it looks and feels like a captured converter, I don't think it's a captured converter because I've seen similar fountain pens, which are demonstrator, uh, Dolce Vita, and uh, you can see inside, and that's a piston. And uh, it's a ratcheting piston, so when it reaches the top, it makes that ratcheting sound, so there is no danger in over twisting and breaking the rod inside. Very, very nice feature. And overall, this is the details of the Delta Dolce Vita Mediterranean celluloid. Let me know your opinion in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about this fountain pen. And if you enjoy my content, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. This will help me a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And of course, if you're not subscribed to the Penventure YouTube channel, go down below right now, click subscribe and turn the notification bell on. Now it's time for the side-by-side -side size comparison. Here we have the Delta Dolce Vita next to a Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath Empress, Delta Roma Imperiale Oversize, Lamy Vista, and Leonardo of Gina Italiana Momento Magico. Now let's have a look uncapped. 
uncapped and riding position, the Delta Dolce Vita sits very, very similar in regards of length with a Leonardo Momento Magico. And in regards of girth, it is similar with a Tachia Miyabi Winter's Breath Empress. It's an oversized fountain pen, yet not too tall like the Delta Roma Imperiale, nor girthy as the same Delta Roma Imperiale. Capped like this, the Delta Dolce Vita measures 140 millimeters, uncapped in riding position, it measures 135 millimeters. It is not a postable fountain pen. It is not safely posting and I wouldn't want to scratch the celluloid. Kept, the fountain pen is weighing 51 grams, totally inked and uncapped in riding position like so. It is weighing 35 grams. It is time for the riding sample and I'm gonna ink up the Delta Dolce Vita with some ink. I'm gonna show you this beautiful nib in action because this eight uh, 14 karat gold nibs from Delta are truly impressive. This is a very, very special pen for me. And what better reason than to use one of my most special inks right now. This is the Mont Blanc Leo Tolstoy Sky Blue. I only use this ink once and this is the second time and I'm dreadfully thinking about the day that I will run out of this ink. Although I think I have another uh, bottle of this ink someplace in the ink cabinet, I don't know. I'm gonna put the fountain pen like so. I'm gonna draw some ink. Hmm, this is a complete barrel of ink. I'm gonna wipe up the section, the nib. As you see, it's very, very easy to fill up the fountain pen with ink. Just twisting the piston and uh, let, let's see this uh, nib in action. And we have the pen. Delta, Dolce, Vita. And this is the oversize. And this is the Mediterranean Celu. Lloyd nib 14 karat gold size 8 and this is a medium very very beautiful ink flow it is very rich consistent uh, the ink my beloved Mont Blanc Leo Tolstoy uh, paper 52 GSM Tomoy River paper. This nib has some feedback. It is very, very original to Delta nibs and I observed this with both fine, medium and extra fine nibs that I have in the same size eight format, 14 karat gold. In regards of the wetness, you can see this for yourself. This is a fire hose wet nib. It is very, very generous in regards of the ink flow. In regards of the line, it's putting down. Let's try some normal figure of eights and uh, being so wet, it is almost like a broad nib in regards of the line that is putting down. So it's not near a Japanese medium or something like this. In regards of flex, let's apply a little bit of pressure. There is some give but the nib is quite, quite stiff. Um, being that it's such a rare nib slash fountain pen, I wouldn't advise anyone to try out the stunts uh, of uh, flexing such a nib. Now let's try out the, the normal staple sentence. The quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Beautiful, beautiful nib, a hint of feedback, maybe not a hint, a little bit more, but nothing unpleasant. And I am known to be the guy that doesn't like feedback. With some fountain pens, I like to make exceptions. And in this case, for sure, it is an exception. It has some feedback, but it is pleasant. It is overall smooth, doesn't scratch, doesn't catch the paper, no skipping, no hard starts, plenty of ink flow to please anyone. Now it's time for my personal opinions. And uh, I, I, spoiler alert, 
there will be some controversy regarding this founder pen in my personal opinions. Let's see, what do I like about this fountain pen and what do I don't like about this fountain pen? First of all, I'm gonna start with the parts that I like. It is a personal fountain pen of Ciro Matroni, the co-founder of the Delta Pen Company. And for me, having a friendship with him, it is sort of the token that drives me back to the first time that I meet him in person. And for me, that is a very, very personal touch towards this fountain pen, no matter what things I don't like about this fountain pen, this will weigh a lot more. It is a very, very nice writing nib. It is wet, smooth, feedback. The writing experience with this fountain pen, if I have an exotic ink, I most likely use it in this fountain pen because it lays down plenty of ink and it will show the color, the sheen, the shimmering, no matter what it is in that ink, it will show it up on the paper. Besides that, I love the celluloid part of it because it's unique. It's the one in one Delta Dolce Vita in Mediterranean celluloid, I think so. In the moment of recording this video, I think this is the only founder pen. So the rarity tied with the personal one makes it a very, very valuable founder pen for me. I don't know how to put a value on this fountain pen being so one of one. I think we should move towards the parts that I would like to criticize. And don't get me wrong, there is plenty of good things regarding this fountain pen, but there is some things that I don't like about it. It's the weight distribution. This fountain pen is not your um, workhorse pen that you can use everywhere, take it with you, uh, write notes at the office or something like this. It's just simply uh, not that good in that scenario because it's a screw cap, so there is plenty of um, unscrewing the cap if you want to take notes and put it back. The weight distribution, it's a little bit off. It is back heavy, not to the point that's just simply absurd, but it is back heavy. And this is one of the features of fountain pens that I've uh, noticed recently that I don't feel that the fountain pen that's back heavy, it is comfortable for me. Maybe. I'm writing more and more lately, more uh, multiple pages. It, it, it gets your fingers uh, to fatigue much more quicker uh, if it's uh, back heavy combined with such a thick and chunky grip. It is a nice rider, which I adore to take some time at uh, the, the end part of the day to just write with it and to hold it in my hand because it's so precious. Another point that I want to show is the actual fact that right here, there is some very, very small scratches from the capping motion. Uh, the cap is not sitting perfectly flushed on the barrel and it has a little bit of give. It sort of touches the barrel and when you rotate it, you have some circular scratches right here. And with fountain bands that are made out of celluloid, I learned that they, they sort of move, uh, shrink, uh, some gaps become uh, much more tighter, some of them become much more loose, and it's, it's very hard to predict how celluloid is going to behave in years to come and in, in many years. So this is probably something tied up to celluloid. It is worth pointing out. Another thing that I would like to address is the filling system, which is sort of encapsulated. So with Delta not being around, uh, if you don't have connections and people that know how to take apart this fountain pens, it is very, very hard to repair this fountain pens. And this is one of the reasons that prevents me from using this fountain pen too often. I'm scared not to do something to this fountain pen and uh, sort of uh, something that cannot be repaired or uh, celluloid parts that cannot be replicated or anything like this. So it sort of takes the fun out of a fountain pen because if I have a resin fountain pen from Leonardo, for example, I'm intended to use it whatever way I like. Whatever ink I want, I put it in that fountain pen, I use it, and I know for sure that there is someone at the other end that can answer and help me out with a repair, with something easy, with something more uh, manageable, or something very, very, uh, I don't know, in need of a capital repair. I think this sums up the, the overall details of this fountain pen. I know you've been asking me to review this fountain pen for quite some time and I do hope uh, this 
is going to settle so many of you. Thank you for being here so long on this video reviewing the Delta Dolce Vita Mediterranean Celluloid. If you are looking for an next writing instrument, don't forget, you can find it at Panventure. Just scroll down a little bit. You will find the details for our website, our social media accounts, phone number, email, anything and everything that you may need in order to get in contact with us. And I will be at the receiving end helping you out with that. If you find our content useful, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. This will help us a lot with the YouTube algorithm to reach out to many more just like you. And if you're not subscribed, you can do that right now. Just click there, turn on the notification bell on, and you will be notified whenever we have new content. Speaking about content, if you want to continue watching our videos, I'm going to leave you this right here. You can click and enjoy. As always, I'm your host, Amy, and I will forward seeing you next video. Take care, stay safe. Bye-bye.